<laughs> I mean, you got to do your job. <laughs> All right, thanks. I mean, come on, Mike. Get on your toes, man. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, coming into the game, three-point defense was, uh, you know, was really going to be the, you know, the name of the game. And, and uh, I thought our guys stepped up to the challenge of defending the three-point line. Um, holding South Dakota to, to three threes is not easy. You look at their box scores of their first five games, and uh, they did an incredible job of knocking down threes prior to tonight. They're well coached. They execute. They cut hard. Um, their, their players understand their roles. I think they're going to have a great season. Um, they're a team that I think can win their league for sure. Uh, having said all that, you know, we changed our pick and roll defense and, and we switched and went to an immediate deny, uh, which we have not done here in the first four games. And it's something that we did against Davidson a few years ago uh, that, that loved to take a lot of threes and their center could shoot threes. And, and uh, I thought our perimeter guys did a great job of switching to a deny. Um, and then, you know, for all those analytic guys that think a mid-range game has gone out of basketball, uh, Jimmy, you know, welcome to Jimmy Witt's world. Questions? Okay. Yeah, Eric, they, they cut it to 10 there with, uh, I don't know, seven, seven, I think exactly seven minutes left. You're thinking, eh, you know, they, they're hanging around. And then you guys close out, close out uh, 15 to four. What, what, what was the key to that? Just, I th you know, defensively, I thought we did a really good job of, of locking in. I thought we had a, you know, we, they got some transition baskets off one or two of our turnovers. We, we, uh, we had a baseline switch on the defense where Mason did a pirouette. I don't know where he was going or what route he was taking. They, 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 they hit a shot and uh, got a little bit of a mo momentum. And then and I think there was a timeout right around, right around that time. And, and we were able to regroup. And you know, it's the first time this year we, we've kind of, uh, you know, I call it milk a clock game, where we kind of milk the clock. And, and um, you know, we started at about six and a half minutes where we ran just a wing pick and roll every single time down the floor and spaced it and didn't, didn't try to attack the rim until there was between seven or nine seconds on the clock. It, it, you know, doing it for the first time, I was a little shaky on how we would handle it, but um, really proud of how they, they understood to, to milk that thing. And there was mathematically no way that if, if we just basically dribbled the shot clock out and threw it in the stands and didn't give them a live ball turnover, a quick shoot, that, that, that we were going to win the game once we extended that lead above 15. You talked about Jimmy in his, in his mid-range game. He's been getting you off to fast starts through, the, through these games, but tonight it carried you at times. Every time it seemed like they'd make a mini run, he'd get a big bucket, a put back, a, a drive, and a, and a pull up. Talk a little bit about that versatility that we hadn't seen in full bloom until tonight. Yeah, I think Jimmy's you know main concern you know is always to try to get uh, Mason and try to get Isaiah involved and try to get them quick shots and 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 get Desi shots and I think he recognized you know we shot four for twenty from three um, and still came away with you know with the, with the with the win against a good team and. Um, we've got to start shooting the three ball better for sure. Um, it's now happened, you know, several times, you know, several games, and um, you know. But I thought Jimmy just his shot selection's so good. You know, every time he shoots it, it's a good shot. It's close to the rim. He elevates over the defense. Um, you know, probably you know, people don't recognize. There's a lot of times where you know, the other team's four-man guards him, and I think that's an advantage for us. Teams know that he's got kind of an inside game, and every time somebody puts a four-man on him, he kills that matchup. So hopefully other teams will keep doing it. And then on the flip side, we actually had uh, Jimmy Guard, uh, number zero, Stanley Muda, who's their best player, we felt, who could get his shot better than anybody on South Dakota's team. And so Jimmy's guarding their four man, and I, th I thought that was a, a really key matchup for us because um, he is a tough cover, and Jimmy made every shot that he took a, a, a contested shot. Pretty. You said coming into the season that rebounding would be a huge key for this team. Uh, you guys out rebounded South Dakota tonight. How do you feel that? Uh, they've done in this uh, that aspect of the game yeah i mean i think that you, you know um i mean we got a rebound you know monday night i can tell you that i mean they have one of the nation's best shot blockers they georgia tech has a really active four man they got a guard coming off a game where he had 34 points and his crafty score so um 
you know, we're, we're going to be rebounding against a different team on, on Monday than, than we were tonight from an athletic standpoint and a length standpoint. And, um, you know, at halftime, I, I complimented Desi because he had four defensive rebounds in the first half, which is a lot uh, for Desi to have in a half. So, um, you know, you look at tonight, Mason had seven, Jimmy had seven rebounds, and Isaiah, you know, so we, we didn't get a lot of rebounding tonight from, you know, from our interior people. Um, you know, Reggie only had two and, and Adrian only had three. So at the center spot, we had a combined five rebounds, but our guards did a great rebounding, uh, defensive rebounding job tonight. I feel you got a lot off your bench tonight, considering I mean, they all scored and got some rebounds. Yeah, I thought our bench really played well. I thought, you know, Jalen Harris's minutes were really good. And, you know, he continues to shoot free throws well, going four for four tonight. And, and um, you know, we have not gotten. Uh, a ton of scoring, but but 20. I think we had 21 bench points tonight. Um, you know, our, our our guys that came in and checked in did a really good job for us. With the three point shooting, I mean, like I think Desi's like one of 22. It just seems kind of nuts. And, and Isaiah struggled again. Um, do you think it's just a matter of hey, those shots got to start falling more often, or are you concerned about the three point shooting? Or I mean, I'm concerned about a litany of things every night, but um, yeah, I mean, we need to make some threes because um, we don't post up a lot. So, so we've got to start figuring out, you know, how to get that lid off it. But um, you know, it doesn't do any good to to talk about it with them. I mean, they just got to get in and get reps up, and and um, you know, when we make threes, we're going to be a lot more dangerous team from an offensive standpoint. You guys are doing a great job, you know, winning at home, beating the teams you're supposed to beat. Um, Georgia Tech's already won at North Carolina State. What, what, what's your take on Georgia Tech? And is this kind of a chance for you guys to say, okay, we've been beating all these mid-majors at home we're supposed to. Now let's, you know, what, what can we do against the ACC team on the road? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, three true road games non-conference is, is uh, there's not a lot of, Power Five teams that, that have three true road games, or some that might have uh, more neutral floor games, so to speak. But um, you know, we're going into a you know an ACC program that, like you said, won um, you know a game at NC State. I thought they played Georgia well for stretches. They uh, they're active at the four and five spot, like really active. And uh, you know they have a they have a guard that is just really crafty and can shoot with deep range, and so it's good. I mean, it's going to be a big time challenge for sure, as 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 we all know, any road game against a quality opponent will be. And it's first time us, you know, doing you know it's the first time we've been on the road at all, even traveling together as a group. So um, there's going to be a lot of newness starting on Sunday when we get on the plane, you know. How do we do meals on the road? All that stuff's going to be, you know, new. It's a, it's it's a new staff. So, but I also think it gives us a time to bond as well. Um, you know, you're with guys a lot more when you're on the road, and and that'll be good for us too. I think. So after the Texas Southern game, the guys said that they were already watching film with you on South Dakota. How quickly do you move on to the next game after games? Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, having worked for Coach. Chuck Daly, it was something that, that I picked up on. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a little bit more of an NBA thing, um, you know, because you play so many games and you don't have a lot of prep time. But if you walked in our locker room right now, um, the keys to the game against Georgia Tech are up on our board. Um, their depth chart's up on our board. Their top scorers, rebounders are up on our board. And they'll start getting stuff texted to them tonight, whether it be video clips or a scouting report. Um, you know, I mean, one of the one of the newer assistants, you know, grabbed me after the Texas Southern game and said, "Coach, you might want to let him celebrate a little, instead of bringing up South Dakota." But I also think that it's really important that our guys understand, you know, how much we respect. You know, we won the game against Texas Southern. Um, you know, they're they're student athletes. I know they're going to have fun after the game as soon as I leave there, anyhow. So, uh, but I do think it's important that 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 you, you know, look at the games last night. I mean, UCLA loses at home. Um, I mean, there was three of them last night. 
that you're just wondering like how does how does this you know how does it happen and it it happens when you're not mentally ready to play because anybody can beat anybody and so that's kind of our thought process on why let's start looking into the next opponent as quick as possible uh, Eric, do you feel like you guys are ready for a road, big road test? Are you? Anxious? Are you coming to the game Monday? I can tell you after the game. Um, actually, uh, that's probably the only one we're not going to be on the road <laughs> for. Sorry about that. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I don't. I, th I think it's a great question. You know, and and um, I think we're still evolving as a team offensively. Um, look, we're small. You know, and 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 um, you know, we got to play great post defense. And we got we got to rebound the ball. Like we're going to have to scrap around and and do everything we can from a defensive rebounding standpoint. And then we're going to have to make we're going to have to make if we go four at twenty on on the road um, against Georgia Tech, probably not going to win the game if that's what we shoot from three. So we got to make a few threes um, at a higher clip than we have. We've got to defend at a high level and we got to rebound the basketball um, to win a, against anybody on the road. Thanks, coach. Thanks.